Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with some news on the Unity front. That is specifically that Unity 2019.1 Beta 1 has been released. Now if you've been following the channel for a while, you've probably already saw about Unity 2019.1 Alpha. And the reality is, if you're already up to date on that news, there's not going to be a whole lot of new new here. That's one of the downsides to them doing Alpha releases, is these betas aren't going to be that overwhelming in their feature content. Now if you didn't already watch this video I did about the 2019 Alpha, well, there's a lot to talk about here, so without further ado, let us jump in. Now, this is coming from the forum. If we go back over here to the actual official announcement, uh, we can get into the release notes, and I'll link them, but they're huge. <laughs> Actually, they're just, they kind of just keep going and going and going and going, and it's mostly all minor fixes, etc. The one major feature that is kind of highlighted here that isn't highlighted elsewhere is this guy. The Unity Video Player can now be used with the Vulkan Renderer. That is the only thing that is not mentioned in the rest of this that is from the README that I think will really stand out to people. So if you want to go through the full release notes for this version, I will, of course, include them, but we're going to gloss over that for the most part and look at the highlight features, which you can see from this forum post. And you can see the highlight features of Unity 2019.1 are the shortcut manager. I actually focused on that or featured that in this video. So if you want to see the new shortcut stuff in action, do be sure to check that out. But you've got a lot more control over shortcuts now and it's all in one place in one settings window. Uh, more GPU light mapper functionality in the form of support for double-sided global illumination flag on materials, support for shadow casting and receiving on meshes. Android got OpenGL ES 3.2 support. Uh, native rendering support for Vulkan. I think that's the biggie for a lot of people. Physics uh, added methods to improve the closest point to a Collider 2D. Particle system improvements, Android package packaging, uh, incremental garbage collection as a preview, um, scene visibility, and timeline signals. Now they've actually got details on all of those things. So we're actually going to go into those in a little bit more depth as we go. So the first one here is we have patching for Android apps. This one is pretty simple. Building an APK is a pig of a process. It takes a long time to build for Android. And what this allows you to do is actually just patch your changes as opposed to doing a complete rebuild. So you'll see the new settings here for it. Uh, I will throw the links to all of these particular things down below. So basically you can patch up instead of doing a full build. So you see here, process for building an application for Android can take sufficient amount of um, significant amounts of time depending on the project size. To speed up the process, you can choose to patch the package instead of rebuilding it. That's going to be definitely a time saver for people working on and doing incremental improvements to their Android development. Next up, we have garbage collection. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of details here, but basically they're getting into incremental garbage collection. And incremental garbage collection, uh, basically, instead of doing all your garbage collection at once, it kind of garbage collects over time. The reason I'm not going to get into a whole lot more detail on it is... I already did. So I actually have a, an in-depth video on the incremental incremental garbage collection feature coming to Unity 2019.1. Their plans for um, phasing it in and so on. Now this could have some breakages for you and it may not be ideal in all circumstances, but having garbage collection kind of run as a constant low end process as opposed to screeching your app to the halt to a you know screeching halt could be advantageous. It kind of depends on how your actual code is implemented, but this could be a pretty profound feature change for your at your application's performance. Uh, now, next up, we have timeline signals. Now, timeline signals are kind of, you can put them in um, your timelines here. And one of the things you can do is basically, so now they have markers and on top of that, signal emitters. Now, signal emitters basically allow you to um, do events over time in your timeline. So you could add a signal emitter there that fires off, for example, the explosion signal, which then uh, can be handled to do whatever you want to do uh, when an explosion occurs. So this gives you a lot more programmability uh, and responsiveness in your implementation of your time lines. Next up, we have scene visibility. And you can see from the description, use scene viz to control to quickly hide and show objects in the scene view without changing the object's in-game visibility. Um, so you can see it in action. Basically, it's a way of toggling visibility directly in the editor, but not actually the visibility of the objects themselves. So it's, it's for you to be able to quickly um, hide and show uh, visibility in the editor without changing or modifying your actual code. And we got new shortcuts and controls on that. And I think that is the, oh no, one more. And then we got particle system improvements. So the big one here is C Sharp job system support. C Sharp job systems is basically their new um, C Sharp programming method for parallel code. Uh, if you could break things into jobs, uh, they can perform a whole lot better, especially you know on multiprocessor, the more scalable. You can often do a fire and forget, or you can parallelize them and so on and so forth. So now having particle system improvements to um, 
a C sharp job support should make your particle systems a lot more scalable that way. So it is now possible to manipulate particle data using C sharp job system with no copying of particle data between script and native code. Simply create a job struct deriving from I particle job system and attach it to the particle system using set job and it will be called in a thread after the native particle update has executed. There's some sample code on doing it. And on top of that, we've got some mesh improvements, brings a number of small improvements to mesh particles, mesh assigned to each particle can be queried and assigned from script. The particle system dot particle struct now contains methods to get set the mesh index. Custom vertex stream has a new mesh index stream allowing users to send the mesh index to a shader. This can be used to write shader code that is tailored to each individual mesh. And the texture sheet animation module contains a new row mode that selects the row of the animation based on the mesh index of the particle. This allows users to assign specific animations to each mesh in the effect. And that is it. That is the end of um, the major changes to the 2019.1 release. And then as I mentioned earlier, when I scanned through this, um, the 2019.1 release notes, there are an absolute ton of fixes over time here too, uh, either from previous alphas or from uh, 2018 releases. So if you were experiencing bugs or otherwise, you might want to check in here. Now, of course, the standard disclaimer applies. This is a beta. You theoretically should not be using betas in production. Uh, they're better than alphas, but they're still, these are for testing and evaluation only at least in theory. And of course, you can download the newest beta via the Unity Hub. Um, yeah, that's about it. And keep in mind, there are a few known issues to be aware of. They are at the top of the release notes here. So that is it. Anything there that's really jumping out to you as a must-have feature? I know a lot of people really want Vulkan support, so uh, Vulkan coming is definitely nice. Incremental garbage collection, although still only in preview, could be a bit of a game changer for some people. You could definitely see, especially if you are having slowdowns or frame drops from a giant garbage collection, spreading your garbage collection out over time to be less of an impact uh, may definitely uh, help some people. Again, be sure to watch that video if you want a little bit more details of what that is going to be all about. But is there anything here you're really excited about? Let me know, comments down below, and uh, talk to you all later. Goodbye.